Ah, there we go. Hello. This is Tim. This is the last day I'm going to be reading from this, Police and the Black Man. And I've been reading from the essay, Boys to Men. And it's an excellent book. I don't know if you can get it, if you can find it. Libraries are starting to open in New York City, but it's a grab and go. Libraries in New Jersey aren't even on the radar, but New Jersey is New Jersey. What you going to do? Um, to facilitate more nationwide reforms, Lisa Thoreau founded Strategies for Youth, SFY, to develop a national curriculum for training police on how to work effectively with youth. SFY recognizes that youth respond differently to social cues and impersonal interactions and that a child's development sta developmental stage affects how he or she will perceive, process, and respond to police. The SFY trainings teach officers to draw upon their knowledge of adolescent development and respond with empathy, patience, and techniques designed to de-escalate youth outbursts. SFY offers courses such as Policing the Teen Brain, Policing the Teen Brain in School, Policing Youth on Public Transit, and Policing Youth Chronically Exposed to Trauma and Violence. To reduce the officer's reliance on force and arrest, SFY has also developed how-to cards to guide officers during arrest and prepare them for effective conversations with youth. The trainers rely on community-based young uh, youth-serving organizations to assist with role plays during trainings. While training in procedural justice and adolescent development, development will likely begin to ameliorate and disproportionate rates of arrest for young black males. Police should also participate in training about implicit racial bias. Studies suggest that well-intentioned actors can overcome automatic or implicit biases, at least to some extent, when they are made aware of the stereotypes and biases they hold, have the cognitive capacity to self-correct, and are motivated to do so. Mm. Capacity, yes, but I'm not sure that people are just interested in changing much. Other research suggests that implicit bias can be diminished when actors are repeatedly exposed to positive images of and develop relationships with people in a previously stereotyped or devalued group. One longitudinal study uh, on strategies to reduce implicit racial bias found success in simultaneous implementation of five corrective strategies, stereotype replacement, counter-stereotypic imaging, individuation, perspective taking, and increased opportunities for contact. Stereotype replacement would require officers to replace stereotypical responses to black boys with non-stereotypical responses. Thus, instead of responding in anger to a child's hostility and questions about why he is being stopped, the officer would explain the reason for the stop and patiently answer the youth's question. That's just basic respect. Counter-stereotypic imaging would require officers to imagine black boys in counter-stereotypic ways. Police departments might periodically identify and share success stories about young black males from the local community, including stories about youth who have enrolled in college, secured employment, or excelled in, academic, in academics or sports. Individuation would require officers to obtain more specific information about a young black male before making any inferences about him or his behavior. But why do we have to achieve something? To be seen as human. We're human. It's weird. Um, I lost my place now. Okay. Perspective taking would require officers to assume the first person perspective of a young black male during the stop. Officers participating in adolescent development training should have an opportunity to engage in role playing that helps them to understand the attitudes and feelings of young black males who are frequently stopped. Finally, officers seeking increased opportunities for positive contact with black boys 
may engage in community service and extracurricular activities like those organized in Connecticut. Ultimately, each form of training requires buy-in from the top down with chiefs and sergeants actively participating and advocating for reform. To ensure long-term organizational change, law enforcement leaders should translate training and the principles they teach into meaningful and lasting reforms of policy, general orders, infrastructure, periodic per performance reviews, and mandatory requirements for promotion. The essay goes on, but you can get this book. You can find it. Like I said, it took me a while. I didn't realize that was a cop. Um, but this is what the book looked like, Police and the Black Man. A lot of essays in it, a lot of good stuff. Now that we're protesting and police departments are being dismantled, officers are being held responsible, so a lot of police officers are quitting. Um, I personally think that we don't need police. I don't think I've ever used them, really. Someone broke into my wife's car, and they basically came and did a report and told her she can pay the fee to get the report for insurance, and that was basically it. Um, they didn't look for the person, they didn't care, they just told us, yeah, it's been some robberies in the neighborhood. So, they're not protecting us, we need to protect us, and if we can't protect each other, if we can't police each other, then we deserve communities of chaos. And that's the way I think about it. And that's what I think is going to happen, because if, if police, more police are arrested and fired, for knocking heads, which is what police do, then they're not going to go into that job. Or they'll go into the private sector, which is um, um, I forgot exactly what they call them, but they're, they're privatized police um, like Blackwater and Z, those kind of corporations. Um, private contractors. That's what they, they'll become. And they'll either go and, and do work overseas or municipalities will <clears throat> come back and hire private contractors to do what police used to do. And it'll be the same people with less, well, I can't say less regulation because police don't really have any regulations, but they'll be working for corporations, which you can't really hold responsible. So we'll see where this goes. Um, I got the next book in mind. It's going to be about the Masons in the United States because we have to deal with some of these organizations. Um, we're moving into a new world order and everything is going to be different. Until next time, please take care of your mind, take care of your body and be safe.